Welcome to Nick's Home Court with your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. This is episode number 80, number 8-0. The Knicks beat the Lakers tonight. It was an exciting game, a very, very exciting game. Especially for two teams who are not at the top. You know, for the Knicks and the Lakers to have this kind of game, it was it was really a lot of fun. But first, first thing I want to say, and this is a complaint, and this is not about the Knicks or the Lakers. My complaint is fans, Nick fans, we have to have more pride. I know the Lakers have a lot of fans everywhere they go, but these are not Kobe's Lakers. I know Lonzo Ball is on the team and all that. This is a bullshit ass team right now. They're still trying to get good, but this is not really a good team. They don't have a star player on their team, and yet and still, it felt like a playground game a little bit where you had cheers for the Knicks and cheers for the Lakers. Now, I don't mind cheers for the Lakers. It just was not overwhelmingly cheers for the Knicks. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like when the Knicks play in Atlanta or when the Knicks play in Miami or really more Atlanta. When Knicks play in Atlanta, even Atlanta was good. It was like 50-50. But that's because a lot of New York people have moved to Atlanta. It ain't like a bunch of L.A. people. Trust me. L.A.'s not moving to New York. And New York's not really moving to L.A., but they're not coming here. So it's a lot of you know New York fans, New York people who are L.A. Laker fans. That's fine. I have no problem with that. However, we got to drown them out. We can't let that shit happen. We can't. I mean, it happens sometimes in Giants games. Dallas fans travel, you know, but we drown them out. You have to drown them out. You can't have Boston Red Sox fans at Yankee games making almost as much noise as Yankee fans. You got to drown them the fuck out. So this is just my call to Knicks fans. Anybody listening, anybody who hears this, even other podcasters who may hear this podcast. Stress to your audience. Maybe they can talk to somebody. Don't sell your fucking tickets when the Lakers come into town. I don't give a fuck. Don't. Because that was just, I'm listening to the game and I'm cringing every time. And, and, and with all due respect, Patrick Ewing's Knicks, that shit never happened. Now, don't get me wrong. When Jordan played, they didn't cheer for Jordan, but sometimes he just did Jordan type shit. What you gonna do? He did <laughs> he did stuff that Jordan did, does. You know, I'm watching the game and sometimes I'm like, oh damn. <laughs> That's what Jordan did. That's what Kobe did. Respect. That's what LeBron does. Respect. But they don't have that kind of player on their team. So we can't allow that. Anyway, I just wanted to say that real quick before, you know, nah, nah. We can't have that. Because Knicks fans are very die, they're diehard fans. We've been here through all the losing, all through all through the bullshit and everything. But we cannot let when Kobe was playing, a lot of people found that it was it was fucked up or whatever, whatever, whatever. I didn't really care. You know, the Knicks sucked. They haven't been good. We finally got a great player to come play, you know, to, to see him play. Look, you see Kobe play in person, your mind will be blown. That's how good that dude was. So come on. I respect that. But this team, nah, that shouldn't happen with this Laker team. Now, let me get to the game. Great game. The atmosphere was crazy. Great game by Kristaps Porzingis. I had some critical things to say about him, but I'm not going to get too critical when he had such a great game. Again, two things I just want to note. Once he develops a go-to move, he will be, he will become even more unstoppable and once he starts to understand where the double team is coming from, he's starting to hold the ball just to look around. But sometimes I'm noticing that he makes up his mind, I need to shoot this ball. Even at the end of the game, I felt like the Knicks, when it was 4.5 seconds, he didn't have to have that shot. Once the ball was inbounded to Nilakina, the seconds were going. You know, you can't make because what happens is when everybody knows Porzingis is going to shoot, the game becomes predictable. It becomes predictable. So that's the problem I have with that kind of situation down the stretch. Porzingis is not. It sounds crazy that I'm going to say this, but he's not unstoppable yet. Why? Because he, he doesn't have a handle. He doesn't really have a handle. 
even though he made a beautiful, beautiful driving move to the hoop and laid it up. That was impressive. I was like, wow, that was impressive. I really did like that move. But like I said, no, 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 no shade to Chris Dabbs. He played a great game. The Knicks played a gritty game. Again, I don't believe in moral losses, you know, and I don't believe in bad wins. It's a fucking win. Two weeks from now, it'll just be in the win column. That's it. So I don't care that it was the Lakers now. It would have been. I do believe in bad losses, though. And it would have been a bad loss that you let the Lakers come to town with their show. And Magic sitting courtside and all these people. And let that take place. I wouldn't appreciate. I would have been pissed. That's why I really wanted to win this game. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. And one thing, another thing I want to say in positivity to Chris Stapps and I'm going to get on some other players in the Knicks that played well tonight. Another thing I like that Chris Stapps did is Chris Stapps wasn't just protecting home court, but he's protecting like, I am the fucking man here in New York. You're not going to bring your circus here. With all due respect, you're not going to come here. No, that's not, you're not showing me up. Because even when Chris Stapps was scoring, I'm listening to Mark Jackson and he's like still giving props to Lonzo. And Lonzo wasn't really scoring. He had a good game. He had a decent game, but he's not a scorer. So you're not going to see that from him, you know, but I got to say this. I got to give major props to Nila Kina because see, I look for little things in players a lot of times I look for an edge like I said I think Chris Stapps has that edge that's why I call him the sneaky killer because he has that edge he's the type of player that he has that edge he wants to kill his opponent and he I'll put it like this he at least doesn't want his opponent to go off on him and tonight for the first time I saw that in Nilakina. I saw a little, first of all, he's getting more aggressive. I told y'all a few games back that once he got aggressive, he should not go backwards. He should continue to be aggressive and gain confidence and learn what he can do. But what I saw tonight, he won't say it. He's a classy young kid, but them cheering for the Lakers and Alonzo Ball, stuff like that, he really got into that game took a couple of great shots he was defending his honor as well and I saw it I'm watching him play he a few times the one thing I can say is I'm I'm gonna tell you this right now I'm telling you this right now my Knicks home court listeners I am telling you this right now when Nilakina is aggressive going to the hoop he can be scary I'm just saying that right now. He can be outright scary once he makes up his mind to go to the hoop. You see, he hasn't even tried any little really dribble moves. He can dribble. He's just being conservative and a little nervous. And maybe, you know, he's learning. But when he's running downhill, you got a six foot five guy with seven foot arms. Literally, he has a seven footer on his head. Well, not really seven foot when he's straight up wingspan goes the other way but I'm just saying he has them long arms he's taller than most guards and I told you he's not going to be the kind of player who's going to blow by his man he doesn't have that kind of foot speed to blow by his man and he's a point guard most point guards probably going to have a little more speed than him however I remember people was mentioning the Greek freak and I see the comparison what I mean is Greek freak doesn't run by people No, he just moves them out the way. Now, I'm not saying Frank is going to do anything like that. I'm just saying, think about the guards. Think about the guards. He showed some toughness guarding Julius Randle. Of course, Julius Randle scored on him, but he still showed some toughness. But just think, when he's going against six foot two guards, once he gains confidence and he's running downhill, that's why I wanted to see the Knicks play much more pick and roll tonight. I want to see... Frank and pick and roll with Przingis much more. And one thing I want to see Przingis do more is actually roll to the hoop because he picks and pops. That's all he does. Picks and pop, pips and pop, slip the pick, slip the pick. That's all he does. That He doesn't really set a real pick and go to the rim. 
Every now and then he should do that. Not all the time, just every now and then. I was looking for them to do that. But then, when they started playing better, they started moving the ball again. They started moving their bodies. They got to play that team. I'm going to say this until they're doing it consistently. And, 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 and what I'm saying is, I'm not saying do this until they get talent. No, look at the best teams in the league. They move the ball, move their man. They believe in ball movement. Ball movement is the only way to win in the NBA, period. Even if you have a team full of all-stars, you have to move the ball. Simple as that. I want to give a big shout out also to Beasley. Cool bees. He played tough tonight. He played gritty. People made fun of him. He fouled out six fouls in nine minutes. He came back playing good. And you know what? I like that lineup tonight. Now, I'm not one of them people that say, oh, he should put Chris Perkins at the five and put him at the four. No, it was good scoring. He was playing good enough defense, and it worked. Sometimes that's coaching. So every this is the funny thing is people, a lot of fans hate Hornacek as the coach, but they won the game because of fucking coaching tonight. Leaving Beasley in, leaving the Lakina in. Bringing Jarrett Jack and keeping the Lakina in. Having Doug McDermott play big minutes. And big shout to him. I did not mention Doug McDermott my last podcast. As one of the commenters in the comment section said, that is true. And that was an oversight <laughs> on my part. Because Dougie McBuckets was playing. He's been playing very well. And again, I want to keep this team, especially all the young players. And you see the mix of vets. And what's up with Courtney Lee going, <laughs> trying to challenge seven footers and and hearing footsteps? But Courtney Lee is playing outstanding. I just want I just was laughing at that because we used to say that back in the days that you're hearing footsteps, you know. Because back in the days, if you had a fast break, and the guy who had some hops was coming behind you, he was trying to board you. He was trying to put it on the board, and everybody was going to be on the floor. The game would have to stop for a couple of minutes till everybody got back off the floor and then continued the game. That's just how it was back in the days. But anyway. Yeah, he heard footsteps. So, good game tonight. You know, it was good to see all the people in it. It was like theater tonight. It was really good. It was good to see Lonzo Ball. I could see the talent. The, the kid has talent. And, matter of fact, you know, I want to say something. Um, matter of fact, hold on a second. One of the comments is, I like that you responded to me. Because I was definitely, hold on. Yes, Karim Walton. Yes, I was referring to you, but I like what you wrote here. You said you're not. Sh- you said I'm not sure if you were refer- referring to my comment on your last podcast. But I'm not saying tank. I'm saying if when we lose, it's not a bad thing because we need talent. And losing will help us get it. Play hard, play smart, play to win. But if we, when we lose, but if when we lose, don't trip because we have limited talent. Now, I like that. I like what he said, even though I don't really agree, but I like what he said. And you trip because when you have a chance to win a game, you win a fucking game. Period. Winning is the best teacher right now for this young team. And the reason why I say you're incorrect, Mr. Walton, and I like that I like your comment. That's why I read it. I thought it was well put together. The reason why I disagree is we saw it tonight. Kyle Kuzma, he had what, 19 points? He looks like he's a keeper. And he was in late first round draft pick. Maybe second round. I think it was late first round draft pick. I know somebody will correct me in the comments. I appreciate that. But he wasn't a top 10, top 15. He wasn't top 20. I don't think he was even a top 20 pick. And look at Kyle Kuzma. So it's all about your front office, your scouting. And that's why I mentioned those other teams. And a shout out to the commenter who also mentioned that Kawhi Leonard actually got traded to the Spurs for George Hill. That is actually absolutely correct. And that was an oversight on my part. I appreciate that. Because sometimes I'm shooting from the hip. I'm just saying it. Actually, at the time when I did that last podcast, I was driving. So I didn't have, you know, I couldn't look anything up. But it's all good. But again, I don't advocate. Look, 
First of all, when it comes to tanking, this is what I would say. You only should really be trying to tank the last seat. La but like this, once you're eliminated, you should tank. Once you're eliminated from contention, if you're eliminated and it's two months left, yeah, you should play all the young players and let them get better. If the Knicks are eliminated from contention, yes, they should try to lose games because it makes no sense to win them at that point. Unless you put all the young guys in, dots and all of them, and they win in games that way, fine. I can live with that too. But I always tell you, beware of winning games when they don't count. Beware of players that ball out when it doesn't count. Beware of that. I knew a bunch of playground le legends or people who played good in the playground, and when they got into organized ball, all of a sudden they turned into garbage. A lot of times people can't play in that structured environment, and they can't play when it's money on the line, when it's really serious, when it counts. Remember Marty Collins. Don't forget him because he was almost averaging triple doubles at the end of one season, and he got cut the next year because he wasn't really good. So we need, like, 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 oh, for example, tonight, Nilakina playing these important minutes right now. This builds t players up, young players, into something. Look at now, in a contrary, look at Okafor. Now, some people might think Okafor is garbage. Some people might think he's garbage. But look what they did to that man. He didn't hardly get the play. See, that's what tanking does. That's what it does. They had no one. And then they had Embiid and then they drafted Okafor. You know why they drafted Okafor? Now, don't get me wrong. Embiid had his injuries, but they really drafted Okafor because Philadelphia was all about assets. They didn't have a real game plan. First of all, when you don't have a system, first of all, one thing I can say that Phil Jackson is correct about is you have a system and you draft for that system. You can build build your team out. If you don't have a system, you're just saying, let me just draft this guy who can play and draft this guy who can play and draft this guy who can play. If you're a defensive coach, don't you draft defensive players? Offensive coach, you draft offensive players or players who can create shots, things like that. Well, the Sixers were just like, well, let's just draft three centers. <laughs> they drafted three centers. And another thing, that's why I always say front office is the most important thing you, you can have because you have teams that have been in a lottery for 10 years. So that proves that being in a lottery is not a proof. Let me say this. Being in a lot lottery alone doesn't do it. You see, and that's where I fault James Dolan because he's always been willing to spend his money. See, if I had been, if I was James Dolan, I would put all because there's no salary cap. There's no salary cap for GMs and presidents. Now, he spent a bunch of money on Phil Jackson. I'm saying I would just do just what smart business people do in every single company. They hire the underlings. Xbox did. Believe it or not, Xbox did that to PlayStation. They hired the underlings and they came up. That's how you do it. I would have went right to Sam Presti's underling. See if I can get him on a team. See if I can get him. Because Sam Presti's an awesome GM. You know, I would have went to the Spurs like, like the Nets did. That was a decent hire. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but that was smart. You do things like that because your front office is your most important thing after the players. So, again, if you have a great... You can spend a bunch of money when you're scouting the Knicks don't have to be cheap the Knicks can literally have first class in every area of outside of the players they can be first class everywhere and that's where the Knicks focus and I'm happy with Scott Perry in place I like what he's saying I like that Mills is gonna let Scott Perry rock trust me he gonna let him do his thing you know so I just wanted to say that. So, you know, I don't I disagree with you on the point thinking that you have to get higher. Only thing. All right. This is the thing. It's called a lottery. The only reason you want to get higher, it gives you a better chance at a really good player. That's all it really does. It does not guarantee you. And, and too many fans think if you get the top 10 pick or the number one pick, it guarantee you uh, guarantee you. Sorry guarantees you a good player and it doesn't what guarantees you a good player is scouting and then it still doesn't really guarantee you but it kind of helps you 
like Clarence Gaines told Phil Jackson, you better draft him. You better draft Porzingis. He's going to be nice. He's going to be a star in this league. That was scouting. That was scouting. I thought I muted my phone. <laughs> but that is scouting. So that's what you need more than anything is you need scouting and great front office management. And also, I wanted to also add to that as what I'm saying is what you do is you build up your team. You build a culture. Say the Knicks make the playoffs this year. They still going to get a top 20 pick. They get a pick. Hopefully that player is decent, right? Let's say they do that. They're going in the right direction. Two years from now, free agents might look at the Knicks like, hmm, that might be a good destination. That's how you do it. That's how Boston did it. That's how you do it. You build your team up because these free agents are not loyal to the teams anymore. But they're not going to go to a team that's tanking. Who did Philadelphia sign? They didn't sign nobody. They're not going to be able to sign anybody until they prove that they can win games. And they have immense talent right now. But that's because I would rather build my team up. We already have our franchise guy. Build my team up. Get some nice support pieces. Become a playoff team. And then maybe sign another big free agent who you know is already good. See, when you tank, you don't know if that play is good. But I digress. Again, I appreciate the comment. Feel free to comment again, Mr. Walton. Karim, I think it's Karim. Yes. And um, <laughs> one more comment I wanted to get to is, uh, hold on, I don't know if I can find it. Normally I have these comments. I usually screenshot um, the comments so it could be easier to find when I'm doing the podcast. But all right. So I think his name is Christian Omar. And for some reason, it's not showing your last name. Christian Omar Sands, something like that. 13 hours ago, it says that big shout out to Mexico. So you listening to the you was listening to the podcast out in Mexico. With your roommate, Margarita, <laughs> who you convinced to take up exercise and she didn't take lightly to my comment. Look. All right. Let me just say this. My comment that I made when I said to never criticize a fat woman when she's going to the gym. Is not a negative. Maybe it's negative because I said fat because I know nowadays you can't call fat fat. You know, you can't call people what they actually are nowadays. You have to say, uh, you probably can't even say obese, you know. But guess what? I'm not a tall guy. I'm a short guy, you know. And people have no, they don't mince their words when they talk to me. Now, I'm not that short, but I'm still shorter than, not six foot, put it like that. And people don't mince their words with that. But anyway, that comment wasn't meant to be mean or anything like that. I am very much against obesity. I want to take a second, a couple of minutes out to talk about this. I'm very much against obesity. You see, nowadays we making women feel good about themselves. You see the big, beautiful women and all that. That's beautiful. I want you to be confident. But guess what? I want to see people, women, men, whatever, lose weight. I just had a friend last year die because he was walking around with diabetes because he was overweight and he didn't know it how about your favorite rapper big pun couldn't move around on stage my mom has gotten two knee replacements because she was overweight and she finally lost a lot of weight because they was like listen you're gonna kill yourself so it's a serious thing with me i was making light of it and I will never criticize a person who's trying. The whole overall saying is I'm never trying to criticize a person who's trying to do the right thing. There are people out here when you're trying to do the right thing will criticize you for trying to do the right thing. You know, what we call them. I won't even say it. But sometimes you're trying to do the right thing and people criticize you for it. So I just don't believe you should criticize someone who's trying to do the right thing, especially by for themselves. So that's what I actually meant. For the comment hopefully i didn't offend you margarita <laughs> shout out to mexico but that's all it's, it's just a little statement you know 
I just don't believe in criticizing people who are trying to do the right thing. That's the clean, but it's boring if I say it that way. That's why we gotta allow jokes nowadays. We gotta allow jokes. We can't be too sensitive. You know, we gotta allow jokes. Like, how do people go to comedy shows now? You know, I heard comedy shows get canceled in every college around America because people just you know, let it go, relax. Anyway, I went a little too long with that. I'm sorry about that, folks, my fellow Knicks fans. I Again, I always will try to respond to your comments if I feel like I need to put a response out there. So today it was these these I responded to. Tomorrow it may be someone else. I always want to respond because I appreciate Anybody listening to the podcast and comments, I read the comments. Sometimes I'm busy, I'm at work, I'm traveling, and I'm reading the comments, and I'm getting a kick out of it, and I can't wait to get back to my computer and put up a podcast or or some some private time to put up a podcast to talk to y'all. I really do appreciate it. So anyway, back to the Knicks. And hmm, so we won. Right now, actually, the Knicks are not really playing well. They're not playing. I shouldn't say that. They're not playing like they were playing, like a team with com- like that was gaining confidence and swagger. But they're staying around the five hundred mark. Now, what are they? Uh, fourteen and thirteen. Now we have enough games to say that this is a decent team. A five hundred team is a decent team, and if they're five hundred at the end of the year, that's forty one wins. And nobody expected that. And that shows that Chris Stapps is a true franchise player. That's why one of the reasons why I want them to win so bad is because basically if they won only 20 games with Chris Stapps as your franchise player, that's a problem. Maybe he's not a franchise player. Maybe he's a number two or three, but he's leading the way in victories. We got to see these team, this team play good on the road. I can't wait to get Tim Hardaway Jr. back, get well soon. You know, I can't wait to get him back on the court because tonight you saw that they needed him. Again, like with Courtney Lee, I love Courtney Lee, but don't expect the, you know those big scoring games from him. That's not his game. You know, he, he, he lifted it up, but that's not his game. He just doesn't do that all the time. You know, that's why I'm like, I can't wait to get Hardaway back. And I'm glad to have Baker back. But what I'm really looking forward to is a new and improved, aggressive Nilakina gaining confidence it will change literally change the fortunes of this team if we can see in the second half of the season an aggressive yo he had 13 5 and 5 I told you when the season started to to the new listeners listen to what I said about him he's going to be a stat filler he's going to be and this has got to understand this is 13 5 and 5 and this is like his best game but I could see him going for not in that, maybe not now, but in the near in the near future, maybe eighteen, seven and six. Like he's always going to. He was tough tonight. He was going to the boards. He was coming up with the loose balls. He was into the game. He still get passes the ball too early. He gives the ball to the big guys in the wrong spots and other players in the wrong spots. He will learn that. He's a willing passer. He's still learning on the job. So he's going to make those errors. But I love the grit that he showed tonight. I love the grit that the Knicks showed tonight. And we got some we got some games coming up against winnable games. We got to win these games because it's going to be harder games coming up. We're going to have injuries. There's always injuries. You're not going to be at your best. So you're going to you need to win the games that you're supposed to win. That's the mark of a good team or a decent team. And right now what the Knicks are, the Knicks are a decent team. They're not a good team, but they're a decent team. They are what you call okay. One game over 500 is an okay team, but it's a team that's good enough to make the playoffs. And I would love to see the Knicks in the playoffs with Chris Apps and and Nilakina getting big minutes. That would push, you got to understand, that would push our rebuilding effort ahead a year or two. And again, we're still getting a, a draft pick. And I want to talk about one another guy. Uh, he's a shooting guard. His name is Lon, I think it's Lonnie Smith. I might be butchering his name. I have one to talk about it. I may spend time talking about prospects. He's a shooting guard. I think he plays at Miami, um, college Miami. And uh, kid is nice. He reminds me of Donovan Mitchell, but he's six four, six five. He's a little taller than him. He's nice. I've been paying attention to the college and see who we're going to get. But 
that kid now I've been on bridges right now that kid from Villanova he's a defensive player actually and he's scoring now his stock has gone up he's up to the 10th pick that's going to keep happening throughout the season the Knicks will go to get a good player as long as they're putting their scouting up there we're not going to get Luka Doncic folks we're not getting the number one pick that's not happening we're not getting Marvin Bagley we're not getting none of those top five picks. I just really doubt it unless we really get lucky. Well, I don't know. I don't I don't even know if that's lucky because that means that we had to suck and lose enough games to even be in the ballpark. And that's not what I'm looking for. You know, and people always one thing I want to say is people say that sometimes te- teams do get stuck in the middle, you know, four or five seeds and, and, and struggle to move up. See, a lot of people say that, but. I don't understand why people just don't really copy the Spurs model. The Spurs did it by going overseas and developing their players and putting them into their system. Danny Green was a marginal NBA player until he got to the Spurs. Anyway, glad I got to talk to y'all tonight. This has been Nick's Home Court, episode number eight. 88 oh i can't wait till i get to 100 that'll be fun episode number 80 i am your host my name is greg armstrong nick's home court i'll speak to y'all later peace